Hi everyone, thanks for listening to my presentations. Today I'll be talking about tuberculosis prevention. Prevention, they say, is cheaper than cure. Sometimes we can prevent some diseases, but when we have them, we don't even have cure. A typical example is HIV infection. You can prevent it, but if you can and you get it, you can get cure. And this will take us through surveillance, control, and disposition. Note, if someone is having acid alcohol fast bacilli test done today and is positive, or the individual was to the clinic and symptoms of tuberculosis is presented and diagnosis is made, believe this, he or she has been contagious three months before now. Transmission. We can't prevent anything that we don't know how it is transmitted, right? So it is transmitted through person to person and could be through animals to person called zoonotic tuberculosis. And the example here is Mycobacterium bovis. Through inhalation of droplets nuclei, and the airborne particles is so small, about one to five microns in diameter. It could be contracted through coughing, singing, and untreated and active pulmonary tuberculosis, through untreated and active laryngeal tuberculosis, and in those with cavitations. In hospitals, it is possible to transmit tuberculosis through endotracheal intubation, bronchoscopy, sputum induction, chest therapy, nebulization, tuberculosis abscess irrigation, autopsy on TB dead body. Widespread transmission is more in pulmonary tuberculosis and laryngeal tuberculosis. Extra pulmonary tuberculosis are less contagious. How do we control this? There should be written tuberculosis infection control plan. And any cases found should be isolated. This is how it was done in United Kingdom in those days. That's why they have very low rate right now. And I think the same is done in other Western countries. And I'm imploring all other countries worldwide. It's not enmity, it's not disregard. Anyone diagnosed with tuberculosis should have that education of the importance of isolation, and isolation should be embarked upon immediately. We should educate all workers on TB. We should use protection gear while interacting with any patient with pulmonary tuberculosis. Airborne infection isolation, formerly called negative pressure isolation, should be used, which means a single room that allows air in but not out. Then, should still cover the cough and stasis while isolated. Restriction of movement is necessary and respiratory protection all the time will be required. Visitors must wear masks while visiting such people in their isolated rooms. Contacts or contacts tracing, which means singular or plural. We have to investigate all contacts. For what? For latent tuberculosis infection or active TB. All family members and other close contacts should be tested. We can use our TST or IIG array. Remember what I've said earlier, that if this individual is AFB positive today, or the symptoms are just starting today, please don't overlook it. Three months ago, he or she has been spreading this disease. We have to screen all healthcare workers. We can use our TST or IG array, and we'll repeat the same. 8 to 10 weeks following the end of the exposure. Surveillance. TB incidents should be on record. 
particularly with public health department. Affected group in the community should be identified. For example, it could be children. And state or public health should be involved. Annual serial testing for the exposed health workers in regions with endemicity should be done. What are the possible risk factors for tuberculosis when trying to prevent future occurrences? Endemicity of tuberculosis is a strong factor. So if TB is known in a particular region, then the possibility of acquiring TB there is high. The region of birth and travel to the region with endemicity. Contact with anyone with active pulmonary tuberculosis, just as confirmation of TB, smoking, heavy drug usage, alcohol, working at certain rich centers, overcrowding, poverty, and immunocompromised states, having HIV, chronic renal disease, cancer, chemotherapy, silicosis, and transplantation with immune suppressant medications. The higher probability would be with anyone having positive TST, cough greater than two to three weeks with fever, night sweat, weight loss, and hemoptysis. Anyone with HIV infection now having unexplained cough and fever will be having higher probability of having tuberculosis. In the face of increasing risk of tuberculosis, but now diagnosed with community-acquired pneumonia, and the pneumonia is unresponsive to treatment, then the probability of TB in such individual is very, very high. We have to stop the isolation or the surveillance if, if there's alternative diagnosis that has been made, or if three consecutive ARB sputum smear results are negative, or two NAAT results are negative. Disposition. Kindly confirm cases to public health. Follow up suspected cases and have TST, IGRA, and if possible, sputum culture done. Manage confirmed cases with directly observed therapy. You can check my presentation on treatment of tuberculosis for details. May discharge home. But never discharge home if the person is immunocompromised or the individual is less than five years old or the individual is having children less than five years old in the house because they will transmit to those children or you are not sure if he or she will take the medication so don't discharge home. With that, I've come to the end of this presentation. Kindly share and remember to subscribe. There are more other presentations on tuberculosis and some other health issues on my channel. You can check out for them. Thank you. I appreciate it.